Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Indian Bible because it's got a really interesting backstory that I thought you might enjoy, so let's get into it. Now, the first Bible printed in any language, actually, in North America was referred to as the Elliot Indian Bible, and it was written in an Algonquin language, and it's the Wampanoag Nation, but what is of interest about that is the Wampanoag people, they didn't even have a written language, actually, just a spoken language. So Eliot translated the Bible into their native Algonquin tongue, phonetically using our alphabet. But you don't get the first written Native American language until like the early 1800s with the written Cherokee. And we're told Sequoia created the written language from scratch, and it took him about 12 years. So quite an achievement back in the 1660s. But the Wampanoag Nation, it turns out, even their spoken language disappeared soon after English settlers arrived in the 17th century. So a lot going on, and we're told that, unfortunately, many first editions of the Eliot Bible were lost during the destruction of this war that lasted one year, King Philip's War, which also decimated the indigenous populations of the area. So there's always a cleansing event with this early colonial period. Whether it's a great fire, whether it's a pestilence, or in this case, a war. Now, I think that at least some of these wars are just cover stories to explain away this destruction that has happened in a lot of places. Even if you look at Detroit, once again, a great fire. Uh, it destroyed a lot of the buildings, a lot of the city. This early colonial period was just burned in 1805, we're told. And you can find the same pattern in a lot of different places. But getting back to the Elliot Indian Bible. So yeah, in 1663, they printed, we're told, a thousand copies of the complete Bible. And unfortunately, as mentioned, a lot of them were destroyed during this war, the King Philip's War. But out of the thousand plus copies that were printed in 1663, there are estimated to be only 39 copies in existence. So I guess my speculation here is that some of these Bibles actually existed before this major destruction that is not in our history. But this was no small feat because even the paper, there was not even a, an official paper mill in North America. The first paper mill in America was not even established until 1690. So after the production of these Bibles, so all of the paper had to be imported from England, including I, even the ink, I believe, was imported. So a massive effort went into getting the Bibles printed and unfortunately only 30 to 40 remain but there was even some interesting details hidden in some of these bibles but it wasn't until i believe the 1700s that you actually get the first complete english bible printed in america so this elliot indian bible was way ahead of its time another element that i find really interesting is where it was printed it turns out that the bibles were prepared in the Indian College building at Harvard because I've looked at this Indian College in the past and I believe it was destroyed during this event and there's been excavations in Harvard Yard and they found traces of that building, this Indian College building. But when you look at what happened to the Indian College, the official narrative is that it was just emptied at one point and then it was crumbling. So the decision made was to dismantle it and we're told the bricks were used to build another hall, which that was torn down, I guess, as well in 1781. So my view here is that the Indian College, a lot of these buildings were destroyed during this event and were given these, I believe, that are cover stories. So I find it really interesting. These Bibles were printed here or at least prepared here and once again, you know, I think a lot of these early colonial period sites, including Charleston, once a walled city, you know, buried now, basically, they built on top of this walled city. And during excavations, they find portions of it. And I believe this portion of this wall was like eight and a half feet below grade. So I think this is all due to some event. And then they start building all these neoclassical structures. And you can find this all over the world. But getting back here. So yeah, the, according to our history, the first printing press did 
didn't even arrive in America until 1639, but they found traces of printing type during these excavations in Harvard Yard. So just really, really interesting to me. And another element to this Elliott Bible that makes me think it might be old world. Of the 39 remaining copies, some of them are dedicated to Charles II, King of England. And I find that really interesting because if you go to some of these other colonial period sites like Charlestown, just outside of Charleston, South Carolina, there's this historic site and there have been excavations at Charlestown, which we're told was settled in 1670, where English settlers established Charlestown, named after Charles II. And just to show you how close this historic site is to Charleston, uh, there's some tantalizing discoveries that have been found at this uh, Charlestown historic site. And here's some of just the artifacts, fragments of wall plaster, window glass, lime floor, brick hearth. Also, these tobacco clay pipes, they find these all over the place. But what is of interest to us is they found some of these tokens but some of them feature the likeness of Charles II. And again, I think this site was buried during this event. So it's just interesting to find some artifacts related to Charles II at other sites that I think were actually destroyed during this event as well. And here's just a close-up showing that same token, but also including the reverse of that token. And yeah, when you look at Charles II, his reign was, we're told, from 1660 to 1685, and a lot of destruction goes on during his particular reign, including the Great Fire of London falls right into his reign. And uh, also of note, during Charles II's reign, England gains control of New Amsterdam, renaming the land New York City. And during excavations under Battery Park, they found this colonial wall buried I think 10 feet below grade. So again just another early colonial period site significantly buried associated with Charles II. So a lot of carnage and a lot of it seems to be associated with him. Now the question is do I think a lot of this actually happened though during the 1660s and I think my answer is no. I think it happened at an earlier point and we're just replaying history basically, you know, because what comes after all these destructive events a lot of times are the really impressive neoclassical buildings, what people might call the Tartarian buildings. That comes after this. And it, we think they're lying about some of those dates and constructions, you know. So it seems like this all happened earlier and we're just being, a, a new history has been given to us and where it's very similar, but it's covering up a lot of these destructions, in my opinion. So it's just very convoluted, our history. But I just wanted to point out Charlestown. Uh, they also found this blue and white pottery, Delftware, and here's Charlestown again, but several miles away from there, if you go to Drayton Hall, this is Drayton Hall, but they do a ton of uh, archaeological excavations in and around this structure. But one in particular, below the basement floor, they found another piece of Delftware, blue and white pottery. And that's several miles, again, out, away from Charleston and Charlestown. But if we go back to Charleston, they also, during excavations for this wall, they found more of this blue and white pottery. So again, I just wanted to point that out because I think this is a larger event and we're just given all these narratives about war, pestilence, land reclamation, raising street levels. But I think it all harkens back to this unknown event, in my opinion. So. I think that's about all I got for you today. And I think I'll leave it here, but I do want to give a big shout out to my channel members. Thank you for all your help and support. Greatly appreciated, as well as my patrons. Thank you also for all your help and support. As mentioned, it is greatly appreciated, and I thank you very much. So with that being said, until next time, take care. Bye.